So I'm working on this piece today and I thought why not just uh, thread a couple needles and turn the camera on and chat for a little bit. And really it's just two needles, one for some colonial knots and one for bullion knots. Have not done one of these that wasn't alive for a while. This is a long piece of fabric that's going to be the outside cover for a strange little project that I've been working on. Um, I say strange because it started off with one idea in my head and it seemed like, you know, such a great idea. <laughs> and then I started working with it and realized while it was a great idea, number one, I got carried away with knots. So I, I was kind of not really telling the story I was going to tell. And number two, the structure, while interesting, was not quite the, it just didn't come out the way it was in my head. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just... Um, sometimes I get frustrated and it's like, oh, you know, I, I don't often have a planned idea in my head for a project. And this time I did and it just took a left turn. So I thought, okay, what the heck, if I feel like making knots and I'm having a good time making knots, then why not just keep making knots for a while? And however it turns out, I will have a texture that is just really yummy to pet. I mean, because I'm not the only one, right, that pets their projects. Uh, so I'm doing a lot of bullion knots, a lot of French knots, and colonial knots, and then of course some feather stitch, but not a lot of anything else. I'm trying to leave the loose threads because, come on, loose threads are yummy, right? Let's get some stuff out of the way here. Um, this is, you know, I probably anybody that's had formal training in embroidery, they might cringe when they watch me make my bullion knots, and that's okay because it doesn't have to be perfect. Pretty much anything that doesn't come out the way I want it to, like if I make them too short, if I've taken a long stitch and I make my knots too short, I don't worry about it. So see if I end up with a stretch like this, it's okay because I can come back in with more bullion knots and French knots and cover things up. So honestly, there is nothing that can't be fixed or unpicked because I did unpick a bunch of bullion knots I had done in colors that just didn't work on this project and that's okay too it was a little frustrating because that was when I realized the project had taken a left turn and you'll notice I don't work with a hoop so I do get some puckering sometimes and that's also something I don't worry about boy for the first one on the video this is like this gives you a perfect example of how poorly I was paying attention because I didn't have anywhere I haven't done one like that for a while Okay, so let's let's fix it. Let's fix it. I'm going to leave it. I could unpick it, but can you see what's not right with it? I did not do anywhere near enough wraps, so it's all uneven, and there's some bare spot down here. This is better. This is what they should be looking like, and that's okay. Let's fix it. Let's see what we can do, and I had already figured that this was going to be covered with a lot of knots, so this is just the base layer. Wow, look at that right away. <laughs> All right, boy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in really close to this, and I'm going to layer another knot right next to it. All right. I am using a bullion needle, which does make it easier to make those wraps. And this time I'm going to pay attention that I have enough wraps to cover that space. And this is what I've been doing an awful lot in my off-camera time is just sitting and stitching. And, you know, I would do more of it on camera, but to be honest, sometimes I wonder what the heck I'm going to talk about. Okay, so these are the wraps. This is the space. I should have more than enough, but I always like to push it down. Normally, I like to have them where they kind of curve and get kind of wormy, just because I think that adds a, another layer of textural interest to them. All right, so now pull this through, and let's take a look at what that does. So straighten that out. All right, so already that looks better. So that's a better knot. And already you don't notice this down at the end. Now I'm not going to come in with another one in this color because I've got some other shades of green. But let's just, let's come up over here. Every once in a while I wish that I, you know, like took a plan of a, um, of a floral pattern, you know, and transferred it to my fabric and tried to actually follow it. But I know me, <laughs> and I know there's no way that I was going to come anywhere near following what I wanted to on it. So I just, it's like, no, we're just going to freeform it. And the, the worst thing that happens, the absolute worst thing that could happen is that this becomes a practice doodle cloth. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it won't. I, I know this will be, be a really good cover for the project that I'm doing. 
even if it didn't, you know, go the way that I'd originally planned. And, you know, the whole idea of becoming a freeform artist, whether you're doing it in fabric or mixed media or collage or paint, but, you know, the idea of being an artist is to just follow the urges, I think, of that moment. Unless you're trying to do absolutely representational art, you know, somebody's, you know, paid you to do a painting that looks just like their dog. Why are you trying to be a particular something with the art? Um, there are book projects that have turned into wall hangings. There are wall hangings that have turned into vessels. You know, it's all, again, you know, you guys, I'm a broken record, right? It's all about the process. It's all about enjoying the journey. I swear, I don't fiddle with the threads nearly as much. I do fiddle, but I don't th fiddle with them nearly as much when the camera's not on. And I figured out one of the problems is, um, and I don't know why this didn't dawn on me before, this desk is too high and we need to cut the legs off. But I need to wait until the contractor's got some time to come out and take care of that and lower it by about six inches so that I'm not like up. Um, you guys can't see this, but it's just hitting me above above the breast line here. So that's not good. All right. So this one could have used a few more loops, too. So that's OK. We will fix that when we come in with some more greens. All right. And then I didn't bring the inside pages over because I kind of want to leave some of that as a surprise but you'll see how um, it all just sort of goes together. And that was another thing I was kind of beating myself up with because it's all in the same color family. It's all, um, it's a tonal piece. And I didn't realize, there's nothing wrong with it being a tonal piece, but I hadn't realized that's what I was doing when I started it. And so I didn't have a lot of contrast. These are just things that I need to learn to roll with. And I'm getting better at rolling with it. I, I don't think my perfectionist uh, sits in the front seat anymore. Usually she's in the trunk of the car. I try to leave her on the on the corner where she can pick up a ride with somebody else. Um, sometimes she's in the back seat, but I don't let her in the front seat anymore, and I sure don't let her drive anymore. I really don't because, gosh, you know, perfectionism, it, it serves no purpose in our life because you're never going to achieve it, so you're always going to feel like you're cutting, you, you know, you're, you're landing short of your goal if your goal is to be perfect. I mean, perfect is boring. If you want perfect, well, then you want something that comes off the assembly line. Art is, you know, wonderfully, you know, imperfect because we all bring our skills, we bring our experiences, we bring our talents and our levels of talent to it. This will be a nice long one. All right. And I just, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just really trying to lean into being true to me, being my authentic artist self, whoever that might be. And that's been a long time coming. Let me tell you, long time coming. Although I had some, some criticism years ago about my art and it wasn't with textile art. I haven't had a lot of criticism lately, so you would think it would make it easier. But I think when you have just general self-esteem issues, it's never easy. We're, we always uh, second guess whether we should share this with the public. I know I do. And I think, well, you know, I'm, I'm not part of this team or I'm not part of this crowd. You know, and I can give myself all kinds of excuses. I'm sure you can too. There we go. All right. So some of these are narrow at the end and I'm okay with that because I probably did the same thing here, but you just can't see it as much. Now I'm not ready to start doing knots, uh, colonial knots in there, but I do want to add some more little clusters over here. So I think what I was doing was a colonial knot at the end. And I love, these are just nice little, they, they're great, they don't take up a whole lot of thread, and yet they do give you some neat little touches. And I haven't decided yet if I'm going to add, you know, clusters around here. I could do that. I could do little clusters of knots, but that's an awful lot of the feather stitch to do. And it just depends on how I feel. This is a wonderful TV activity for me. I love uh, this weekend. I was catching up on a bunch of YouTube videos. And so I just, you know, put a bunch of things in the queue and just sat on the couch and stitched and stitched and stitched and had such a good time feeling like I didn't have a lot of obligations that I had to do, I could just lean into what I was enjoying in the moment. Um, it wasn't a, a piece that I had to do for a gift. It wasn't a commission. It wasn't a special video. It was just something I was doing because the colors I put together made me happy because the threads I pulled out felt nice in my hands. 
This is fabric that I have dyed myself with who knows what. I have no idea. It could be a combination of paint, alcohol, ink, distress sprays, brushes, who knows. The nice thing about doing fabric that isn't going to be something that you're going to, to wear, so it's not something that has to go through the laundry, is that you know what you color it with doesn't matter nearly as much as when you're trying to you know dye fabric that you want to make sure is safe to have next to your skin and that is going to maintain its color after it's being washed. I never worry about you know the longevity of something like that because most of my stuff is not going to be set out in the sun where I have to worry about it fading. Most of it's going to be in a book or on the wall where people can put it away from the sun. And I don't know art of any kind really, I guess unless it's made out of, you know, cement, is ephemeral. And I'm ephemeral, so I want to get rid of my hang-ups worrying about, you know, well, gee, what if I do this and, you know, it falls apart? What if I do this and it, it melts in the sun? What if I do this and, well, what if I don't do this? What if I don't do this and I lose the whole experience of having the, the joy of making it? What if I don't lean into doing the things that make me happy and I only do the things that I know are safe, the things that are going to be churned out like they came out of a factory? You know, there's not a lot of joy in that for me. Some of you might know that, you know, I used to write books for kids and I had the books that I wrote from my heart. They didn't make me a whole lot of money, but they got me, those are the ones that got me the fan letters. Those are the ones that connected with the readers. And then there were the, the books that I wrote for pay. You know, I did a lot of books for uh, ESL publishers, and I did a lot of books that just basically paid me a flat fee to follow a script. And, you know, that was like churning out something on an assembly line to me. There wasn't a whole lot of point in it. And life is too short. Um, the, the books might have served a point to the kids in, in the classes that were trying to learn a second language, but they didn't serve a point to me. And there are people whose brains are wired in such a way that that's something that they love to do. And I say more power to them. Find the stuff that you love to do. Find the stuff that, that tells you this is how I want to spend my days. And that's what you should be doing. You know, unless you have obligations that you absolutely have to follow elsewhere, why would you spend your days doing the sort of things that just frustrates you? It doesn't make any sense to me. At least not for me. Uh, your mileage might vary. Okay, so here's one where I definitely am going to have it not come out right. And I don't do this very often where I pull the needle out and re-thread it, but I could already tell that was not going to come out right. And part of my problem is I've got this thread so long. Colonial knots don't take a lot of thread, so I have probably a yard worth of thread here. All right, that's okay. Sometimes I do go ahead and start over. And I think in here I was doing little French knots. Can I get to another? Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll tie that off and go over and just do some French knots. And because you're not going to see the back of this, I could absolutely travel across the whole fabric. You know what? That's a good place. To, I'm going to actually look at that. And the only reason I'm doing it this way is because I am on camera and I wanted to give you guys something fun to look at. So I'm going to make just one little knot here. I already know how I'm going to finish the back of this with uh, some bonding, uh, heat and bond, and putting the other sides together, so I'm not worried about having like super, super tight knots. I just want to, there we go, keep it like that. All right, and then I'm going to come over here and add some of my French knots to use up the rest of this thread. So I was thinking I might do some more videos like this. I was also thinking about putting some music on in the background. I'm not sure whether people get frustrated with music in the background or if they like it, because sometimes I concentrate and then I forget, you know, that I'm supposed to say something. Honestly, I think that's one of the reasons I don't do it. You know, it's easy enough for me to do this sort of thing when I'm in my live streams because I've got other people there in the conversation that we can, you know, keep chatting with. Uh, but when I'm here by myself, it's like, well, gee, what else should I tell you? You know, we don't go out and about, so life around here is is pretty calm. Um, we did have rain today, which is wonderful. We've had two and a half inches of rain, which California desperately needs. Desperately. So these are just simple little French knots. And the nice thing about French knots is you can get a cluster like this happening, and then you can start to layer them up even more. I don't worry as much on my first layer if they're kind of sloppy because I know I'm going to come back over them to get even more texture and add some more. And I think, you know, I could probably cover, and I did for a moment think about it, just cover this entire thing 
with um, French knots and colonial knots just because they feel so yummy, especially when you're using like a really neat pearl cotton that's just um, just so soft. Then I thought, well, you know, there's other projects I want to do, so maybe I don't need to put quite that many knots on there, but I am doing a lot of knots on here. There's something about a mass, right? If you have a mass of one stitch or you have a mass of one color, it's like a collection, right? You've collected, you know, if you've collected three buttons, it's not so much fun. If you've collected 100 buttons in the same color, and you're sorting them out, then that's a little bit more fun. Same thing with rocks, with shells. I think it's the same thing with stitches. When you cluster them together, they can make an impact. I do have a few things that I have put in the shop on my website, and I am going to close the shop into vacation mode um, December 1st, so I'm not going to do any more shipping out of that after that, uh, just because of the holidays and things get lost and what have you, and that's too frustrating. So I did want to mention that. Uh, something else that came up in a couple of messages from people recently. If I'm showing you a project that I'm working on, 99% of the time that project will be for sale. And I'll, I'll get it up in the shop eventually, but if I don't get it up in the shop or if it's something you're interested in, you should just send me a message. Don't use the Etsy messaging system. Please send me an email. It's on every video. Um, once you send me an Etsy message, then it gets to be kind of tricky with Etsy because I do not ever post my physical items on Etsy. I only post my physical items in the shop on my website. And then my Etsy shop is strictly for my digitals. Let's see, the French knots take up a lot more thread. And on the inside pages, something I did is I took the same thread and then I just doubled it so then my French knots were really beefy. And this isn't trying to be anything. I'm not trying to make a flower. Um, I've tried that a little bit. And I discover I really like taking the parts of the flowers and working with them, but trying to make something that's representational. Uh, it's just, it harkens back to school and being criticized things not looking like they were supposed to look like and I just like nope I throw up the roadblocks and say I'm not gonna do that anymore all right this seems like a good stopping point Ooh, especially since I just made that big old loopy thing well let's see let's let's fix that since I already pulled my needle through I can't really undo it very easily so what I'm gonna do okay can you see what I did normally I wouldn't care except I am kinda trying to keep these somewhat similar I'm just gonna come in here with my needle and I just want to pull it down a little bit more. In a couple places. And then, all right, so it's starting to come in. And I'm going to do a French knot. And then I want to pick up the edge of it so that I can start to squeeze it in. Normally I like it when I get those really loose ones, but that's not the effect I'm going for here. So now it looks like I just have a, a, a pile that's not real pretty but I can add some more knots to hold down that loop on the outside and it sort of disguises the loop there. And I'm going to come over here. So you get to see me make two goofs and they're not really goofs, they're just, you know, unexpected opportunities. And one more spot right here to tuck down. You can see it looping up. And that's just going to give me some more height in here. Nope, I need one more. And I think I'm just going to make another knot. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to bring it over to the side. Oh, looks like I almost did the same thing again. Ooh, pay attention. Well, darn, look at that. That, that really backfired. Look at that. Not at all. Okay, we're going to have to undo this. I thought I was going to be done, but... We have to undo that one because it was just too big to hide. One little loop I could hide, but that one not so much. All right. French knots are, you know, they're so twisty that it does take a little bit more time to undo them, but you can. The other day I cut probably 50 bullion knots off of an inside page, and that was that was really frustrating, especially since the back sides of my pieces are always so messy. All right, let's see if we can one more try here. And what I want to do is go down. I want to just catch that loop right there, maybe. I think that'll do it. Pull that nice and snug. And there we have it. Uh, I cleaned up my mess. 
All right, I'll be back and show you as I move along here a little bit more and how I hide some of those edges. See you next time.